Hello, so today we're going to be uh, tackling a quality control pro problem where we're uh, given um, data and uh, various subgroups of samples. And uh, this is a very common industrial engineering uh, problem to solve uh, in order to ensure that a production line has a certain degree of quality. So let's read through the question together as you can see it over there. Uh, Best Wood is a manufacturing company producing a large number of short wood beams. The length of all beams should be close to or at 24 centimeters. This is the nominal dimension of the beams. This is the ideal dimension of the beams. beams. Uh, quality engineers at Best Wood have collected 15 groups uh, of, these are like, these are groups of subsamples. So each group consists of uh, four uh, beams being measured. Uh, 15 groups of samples of data with each group containing the measurements of the lengths in centimeters of four different beams, as I mentioned. The data are shown in the following table, as you can see. Um, uh, as shown in the table, the four measurements of the first sample, just to give you an idea what's what, are 23 across the first row. Uh, 23.5, 24.4, 23.6, and 23.9. So it's the first uh, row uh, of, of uh, the, sub the first group consists of the first uh, four uh, samples of beams, and it's uh, across the first row. Uh, the average length of the first subgroup uh, is 23.85 centimeters. So they just sum those up and divide it by four to get the average just for that subgroup. Uh, and the uh, range, meaning the, big, the difference between the biggest, longest beam uh, and the shortest beam is, uh, is uh, 0.9, as shown in the table. The calculations have already been done. Okay. Um, um, so we have 15, to sum up, we have 15 subgroups of four samples. And they've all been taken for measurement and testing. Uh, for each subgroup, the average X bar is shown uh, in the second to last column. Uh, and the range is shown in the last column. The average of all of the averages, it's going to be X double bar, right, uh, is shown at the bottom of the second to last column. And the average of the ranges is shown at the bottom of the last column. So they've summed up all of the averages of, of, the, of the range and the average, obviously, and they've divided by the number of subgroups, meaning 15. Um, the, quality, the question goes on to say that the quality engineers at Bestwood also constructed an X bar R control chart using the above data. Uh, the, uh, the charts are shown uh, right here. As can be seen from these two charts, this is all given in the question, uh, sample four and sample 10, each of which, like I said before, contains four separate beams, um, are out of the control limits. A team of manufacturing engineers and technicians quickly identified the causes of these two out of control points. The team followed a standard procedure to remove these out of control samples from the data set and generate the revised X bar R control charts with the remaining 13 groups of samples of data. The revised control charts are then shown here. Uh, just to explain, oftentimes what will happen is the problematic out of control um, samples will be removed from the production line and then, or the testing sample, the testing pool, and uh, the, the now revised testing pool will be retested to see if there are any other sources of um, non-proper uh, non quality or like, you know, not the correct level of quality or if anything else is out of control beyond the control limits, etc. So as you can see here, everything is in control. So really those were the only problematic uh, groups of samples. <clears throat> so this is uh, question 4.1. Uh, asked us to identify the average length of the beams best wood produced when the process is in statistical control. So what we have to do here is find X double bar. So the average of averages 
excluding subgroups, so equals what? Excluding samples or subgroups, uh, the problematic ones, right? Number four and number 10. As these are removed, and uh, the average and range, uh, and average of averages and average range are recalculated. So a quick way to do this, instead of removing those subgroups and then re recomputing all of the uh, all of the numbers, like inputting inputting um, twenty three point five, twenty four point, like getting the actual sum. It's a lot of calculations on your calculator. So a good way to do this, a quick way to do this, um, is to uh, multiply the, our average, our original average that has the samples number four and number 10, which as shown in the chart is 24. So original average of averages equals 24. And to get the sum of all of the averages before um, it's turned into an average of averages, we can just multiply by 15. Right, because that is the number of subgroups that we have. So if we do 24 times 15, uh, that will give us that the sum of all of the X bar uh, data would be 360. Now, we can subtract this is a quicker way to compute, as I mentioned. We can subtract only the values of the averages for subgroup number four and number 10 to obtain the sum of everything, uh, of all the averages, um, excluding those problematic samples. So let's go ahead and do that. If we do 360 minus 26.15, right, the average of uh, subgroup four, and minus 22.75, which is the average of subgroup 10. This is going to give us 31.1. Now, this is the new sum of our, um, of our averages, um, not including the problematic samples. We've removed two groups. So now to find our new average, our new x double bar, let's go ahead and put it over here. x double bar new or revised. We're just going to take our new sum, 31, uh, pardon me, 311.1, and divide by our new uh, subgroup amount. So since we've removed two, sample 4 and sample 10, that's 15 minus 2, it's going to be 13. Right, we only have 13 subgroups now. So if we divide our new average, our new X, a revised in control average, is going to be 23.93. So that is the end of question 4.1. So for question 4.2, um, they ask us to estimate the process standard deviation of the beam production process. Um, here we need to use the formula for finding the process standard deviation, uh, as well as the table for control chart constants. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down the formula for uh, finding the process standard deviation going to be R bar divided by D2. So this is our general formula for finding process standard deviation. Um, uh, sigma equals R bar over D2. D2 is a constant that we pick up from our uh, 
table of con constants for control charts, <clears throat> as you can see it in the corner. Um, here we require R bar, which we have uh, from the original table of data. And it's at R bar equals 1.413. These types of problems, or this particular problem, is a lot of plug and play. Find the correct information, plug it in, and solve. And um, for D2, We will go to our control chart uh, table of constants. Um, since we have 15 subgroups of each subgroup contains four samples, our subgroup size, as you can see in the table of constants for control charts, is going to be four, right? Each subgroup consists of four uh, samples. And um, so we take the corresponding D2 value. Here, the corresponding D2 value is going to be 2.059. So from this point, we can just plug him in to this formula. We have sigma hat is going to equal 1.413 divided by 2.059. Nine. So our sigma hat, our process standard deviation, is going to equal 0 0.686. And this is our answer. So for question 4.3, uh, they're asking us to calculate the process capability ratio if the design specifications of the beam's length is 24 plus minus 2.2 centimeters. That's the tolerance. So this is 4.3. So they're asking us to find the uh, process capability ratio, CP, uh, using uh, the standard deviation. That's what we found out in the previous in 4.2, right? Um, we have to use the upper and lower specification limits. Uh, these are not uh, the uh, control limits. These are the specification. These are dimensions, right? Those are, that's what um, typically uh, in engineering, when you're building something, making something, manufacturing something, uh, you are given tolerances because if you were if you were asked to make something every single one of like a hundred thousand units to an exact size, that would be extremely costly to hit that exact mark every time. Precision is very very costly, right? So the bigger the specification limits, as in the tolerances for these nominal dimensions are, the less expensive the process can be. You could save money uh, depending on what the requirements for the product are. Just a little background as to why these things are done in industrial uh, manufacturing engineering. So uh, let's go ahead and write down the uh, upper specification and lower specification, uh, uh, design specifications uh, uh, formulas. So first let's write down the formula for our uh, process capability ratio. So we're gonna have CP is gonna equal upper specification limit minus lower specification limit divided by six times sigma. <clears throat> so to get our upper and lower specification limits, since our nominal dimension is a 24 centimeters, as mentioned in the question, and our tolerances are plus minus, so you can be above or below 24 centimeters by 2.2 centimeters, right? Uh, which means that we can calculate our upper specification limit um, as the maximum amount a beam's length can be, right? So our upper specification limit is going to equal 24 
plus the tolerance, the allowable tolerance, 2.2, which is going to equal 26.2 centimeters. Our lower specification limit is going to be 24 minus, like this is the minimum um, tolerable or allowable length for these beams. Uh, it's going to be 21.8 centimeters. By the way, um, at any point during this video, feel free to pause, look at control charts, look at uh, the provided data, look at the formulas, and um, to kind of get a better understanding. So uh, at this point, we can just once again pretty much plug and play. We have our formula, we have uh, ev all the values for our upper specification limit, lower specification limit, our sigma from the previous question, 4.2. So we can just pretty much plug everything in and evaluate our, um, our final answer. So our process control ratio, or pardon me, uh, our process capability ratio <laughs> yeah, is going to be 26.2 minus 21.8. Uh, divided by 6 times 0 0.686. And that's going to give us a value of 1.07. Now, what does that mean? So, in industry, uh, a process uh, that which has a capability ratio below 1.33 uh, is considered to not be capable of producing the parts to specifications. So as we see here, this is below 1.33. So therefore, therefore not capable of producing specifications this last part as to how to interpret these results is just a little extra knowledge if you're interested which eventually you will have to be interested if you do choose to pursue a career in industrial engineering